Hello fellow collectors, Jambo Comics back again. The short little video, just messing around in the comic book room on a Sunday afternoon. And you never know what you're going to find in here. You start going through things. So I found a couple of things I thought I'd share with you guys. Plus, I really nice book i got at the lcs the other day and just didn't get to put up in the last video so let's see what we got first thing i came across when i was going through some old stuff was this it's called collector's dream this is number two it was 30 cents i think i got that in the mail a long time ago it's a fanzine I got to looking at it again. It had a lot of neat things inside of it. Like these. These are really cool. Really nice old stuff here. I think these were the indexes of Marvel Comics. Had all the issues someone had collected. And like Mr. Starenko did some artwork on that. Fantastic Four there. But it had other stuff in it also. It was talking about pulps. Things like that. A nice artwork there for by Mr. Frank Rays. Talking about pulp villains and stuff like that. Shows some of the old Pulp covers there. Those old weird tales like that one there on the bottom right. Had the original Conan stories in them. Conan the Barbarian by Robert E. Howard. Those are really sought after and expensive. Very good stories. They still hold up today. Anyway, it's pretty cool. It had uh, just a bunch of different things in it and stuff. A little comic page here in the back. And let's see here. I can see it was a fanzine, so. Okay. Just where you could get some more back issues of the collector's dream. And order you some comic bags. This was another old piece I just had laying around. I think it was from 1977. So I'd share that with you guys. It's pretty awesome old stuff. And found my Foom collection. Foom was a fanzine done by Marvel Comics. Stands for Friends of Old Marvel. And that was number four. Looks like a nice Doctor Doom. By Jack Kirby there. Number four, winner of 1973. Pretty awesome. Nice cover. And let's see. What was the next one? We had number eight. Had a Romita Esposito cover. Number eight of Foom. Nice cap and Bucky. Gotta like that. And this was number 11. This is when Jack Kirby was coming back to Marvel. Uh, it's a pretty popular picture. I remember seeing this around in the day on the inside of other comics that Marvel was putting out in the day. Uh, advertising Jack coming back. I'm glad he did. This one I liked. Uh, had a nice John Buscema, Pete Craig Russell cover, number 12, The Vision. Like I said, these had a lot of good articles and stuff inside of them. Gave you the inside scoop and what was going on in the bullpen and stuff like that. And some of the stories, I think that's a Gene Colan Daredevil cover there, number 13. Nice artwork. And posters inside too. And this one. 
Love this one because it had Stan on it. Stan kind of in the guise of all the superheroes he helped create there. Miss Stan. Miss seeing him in the movies and stuff. There's just a few things I picked up at the LCS that I had laying there in a pile. I already had one of those, but I think it was super cheap. It was a dollar or less, so I like Tigra. And got the new Thor. Number three. Still haven't read those yet, so some of my things to do. I might do that tonight. After I get off, uh, get done looking at all the chats that's going on tonight. Definitely want to check those out. There's a Betty. Betty Page. Betty's kind of naughty there. <laughs> that's why I love Betty Page. This, I was so happy to get uh, Seth at my LCS got this for me and had some wonderful Jim Steranko art on it of uh, Airboy and Valkyrie. And I think it's an homage cover to uh, Detective 31. But uh, I was really happy with that. I thought it was really beautiful. And I didn't know Steranko was still doing work, but I mean, this is the... Uh, New issue of uh, Airboy, number one, the Virgin cover, and uh, I guess he was commissioned to do it, and it's beautiful. He did a really good job. You can see the Valkyrie there. I mean, that's awesome. I think Jim should do more stuff. I got to meet Mr. Steranko at a uh, con in Lexington, and he was really funny, great guy to talk to, and quite flamboyant. When I met him, uh, he was signing a bunch of stuff, and I got him to sign something for me. I'll show you that. And uh, this is always my favorite cover he did. Here's where he signed it, but it's the Hulk. And this is like poster size almost. It, he signed for me. And uh, so I met him. He had he was at the table. I was talking to him. And uh, like I said, he's really flamboyant and was uh, kind of doing some magic tricks with his hands. And uh, he showed me an old picture he had. And... Uh, it was a old black and white picture of a guy tied up in chains, getting ready to get lowered into water, kind of like Houdini. But see, I knew Mr. Storenko did uh, magic, and uh, he was asking me, he's like, you know who this is? And I knew it was him, but I didn't want to mess up his little deal there, so I said, Houdini. And he said, no, that's me was really cool. He, like I said, he was quite the showman. Super nice guy. Signed that for me. And glad I got to meet him because he evidently is still doing work and still very good at it. And we had this that Mr. Stranko did. I don't know if any of you have those. or There's two of them. History of Comics 1 and there's History of Comics 2 that I don't have. But this has like all the Marvel and DC and some of the uh, other characters from Fawcett and other companies. See it down on the bottom right there. Just thought that was really cool. Uh... This had a lot of, uh, you know, uh, like, uh, it had a lot of stuff about pulps in it. How comics got started from, like, maybe the pulps and stuff, some of the characters. 
uh, some more planet adventure just some neat old stuff and uh, told about how they laid out pages and everything like that and some old Superman and very Batman of course very entertaining pretty informative book I enjoyed reading reading it again a nice Bill Everett Torch versus Submariner like that Marvel Comics number one anyways yeah it had a whole bunch of stuff in it like that if you see those grab them they're very cool very good stuff and I mean that was just wonderful I think he still got it. I think he should do some more stuff. Miss a lot of the old comic artists in their style. It's not a lot of the new stuff that I do like. I guess I'm just particular that way. Found another Phantom Stranger. Like that one. Number 16. It's a double size, 48 pages. That's some nice art. Pretty good shape. And let's see. On this, this is my surfer number one that my friend Tony got me a long time ago. I was uh, not able to make it to a con we were both going to go to. And I had to work, I think. And Tony Stanfield, my buddy, he's, well, he's a good buddy. I mean, because he... <laughs> Went up there and uh, did some uh, shopping for me and got me a couple of things. And this is one of them. I mean, it's a very nice number one. It had a grease pencil on it there or a store mark or something on the surfer's chest there. But other than that, it was in pretty great shape. It had a tear in the back cover. And, you know, a few little chips, or not chips, but uh, just creases and wear around the corners and stuff like that. But presents really well I cleaned it a little bit and uh, I think it pops pretty good and looks pretty nice I was so happy with that we got that whole surfer run and I still think that is probably my favorite one of my favorite run from the Silver Age uh, this got to throw some gold in there because you know it's what we do, and this is uh, just uh, Boy Comics, number 60 from 1949, and Charles Biro cover on it. Had Iron Jaw, he was like the one of the famous villain, villains in the Boy Comics there, and uh, Crime Buster was the, the hero of this magazine here. I just thought that uh, that cover was kind of funny, if you really look at it. You can see what I'm saying. It's just very funny. <laughs> Pretty odd stuff. Charles Biro did the uh, Daredevil back for uh, Gleason back in the day. And it was a pretty popular uh, comic. Um. Uh, it was selling right up there with uh, Superman and Batman and uh, Captain Marvel. It was pretty close to them in popularity at, at one time. And kind of died out there toward the end. When the comics code came in and everything, they, they kind of went under and folded and stuff. So and I used to have a number 20, I think, of Daredevil. And it was a really kind of... Uh, bondage kind of kind of a graphic cover if you wanted to look it up online you'll see what I'm talking about it's like they're torturing this uh, lady and they got her tied up and pouring her feet in concrete or something like that and Ray Brander or something like that just thought I'd throw that up there too nice 3d Sheena 
because that's awesome. That is pretty awesome, the 3D. Oh. And we got some 3D glasses in that, but just thought I'd throw those out there because those were dinosaur 3D glasses. And yeah, like I said, it was from 1953. It was $0.25. Cents. I don't think I paid 150 for it. I think I got it for less than that, but I'd do some haggling with somebody. This guy was staying up there at the top, but you know, all in all, it's in pretty nice shape. Good old book. Love the old stuff. Well, that's it for today. I just uh, thought I'd throw another video out there, just going through the. Uh, comic room straightening it back up uh, finishing up my Sunday in here and uh, like I said I'm probably gonna get on and look at some of the streaming that everybody's doing later and uh, just uh, hit the like button if you enjoyed it and, uh, push that subscribe button I really appreciate it and Thank you guys for coming by and checking it out, checking out my channel, and as Chrissy from Three's Company says, subscribe. Thanks guys, thanks for stopping by.